Good evening. Um, this is our next installment on the pivot door. Um, I wanted to show you guys, I took some time tonight. I was either going to model up uh, the design of the skin of the door, the outside skin of the door, in the computer, uh, or uh, do a clay model. And when I got in and started messing with the computer, it I, I just wasn't able to uh, get my ideas quick enough, get my ideas down quick enough, it was taking too long, uh, so I pulled out a uh, couple hunks of plasticine modeling clay and uh, went ahead and did a little design for the door. So um, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, my client, Ryan and Meg, I should say my clients, Ryan and Meg, um, they wanted this door to be Corten steel because uh, Ryan's grandfather lives next door and he has the logo for his business um, cut out of Corten steel next to the front door and it's a really cool looking logo and it's a really cool looking piece and he wanted to tie back into that uh, material, that texture and create something at their front entry that would really kind of be a stunner. And so we're doing the pivot door, which is a pretty cool thing. So it's six foot by eight foot offset pivot. So it's offset a, a foot from uh, the hinge side, I guess. Um, and then we're going to cover this frame in Corten steel. And quite honestly, uh, um, well, I don't, I don't want to put words in Ryan's mouth, but uh, this stuff comes in four foot by eight foot sheets and a six foot by eight foot door that doesn't quite work out and he said you know maybe we should put the seam at a little bit of a diagonal or something so it just doesn't look like a boring flat door and my response to that was I don't I don't even know where you're coming from that's not uh, not my vision for the door at all and Ryan answered back he said this is yours Greg you do what you want with it um, just make it art if that's what you want to do and really kind of gave me some freedom so I wanted to give an update where I am and this is an idea if Ryan doesn't like it guess what we'll throw this whole thing in the trash and we'll start over um, I'm not opposed to that I've gone through a bunch of different sketches I've, I've probably done no fewer than 15 sketches on this design uh, and kind of iterations of it and pieces and parts of it and I keep coming back to some central elements that I really like for his house. It is a lake house. Uh, it faces south. Ryan is a swimmer. And uh, he's actually a hell of a swimmer. His family has a, a history of swimming uh, and prowess in the, his, in the swimming. And uh, so the lake is a big part of their life. So I wanted to make the water and sun part of this door. The other requirement that Ryan gave me was to make the door timeless. So we can't have anything that 15 years from now somebody looks at the door and says, oh yeah, that was probably done in 2010 or 2011, you know, that's so 2000 <laughs> kind of stuff. Uh, we don't want that, so we want something timeless. So uh, the sun, the water, the fire, you know, all those things are kind of timeless ideas. Uh, but I really wanted to pull together kind of my feeling of the house and kind of my impression of what I thought when I come up to the front door. The other piece is there's a big window on the back of the house that looks out onto the lake and I wanted people to be able to see through the front door to the lake. So when someone comes up to the house, up to this door, uh, they kind of get that first impression and then they see through to the see through the house to the lake, through the door, through the house to the lake. Uh, and uh, kind of make that connection. There's also a nice window in the garage that does the same thing. There's, there's a lot of tie back to the lake. So let's take a quick peek. And Ryan, if you don't like this, I apologize. <laughs> I haven't run any of this by him. I just kind of took it on my own uh, to do it. And uh, again, we'll throw it in the trash. So don't, don't even worry about that. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is the six foot wide, eight foot tall. And the black spots here are glass, so 
I don't know how well you guys can see some of this. The lighting always kind of stinks in my videos. Um, but the rays of the sun actually undulate coming at you, and then they get thicker. So if we can take a look, they actually get thicker. They're also tapered on the edges this way and that way, so there's, they're going to widen, narrow, and widen, and narrow, and three-dimensionally, I think that makes a really neat um, piece. And part of this whole thing is it's all going to be this core 10 steel, and I work with metal all the time, and, and I really wanted to put my efforts forward to create something that most artists aren't going to be able to create because they either don't have the skill, don't have the tools, uh, or don't have the ability uh, to do something like this, and I'm not bragging about it. It's just this is what I do, and uh, this is my expression. So uh, these kind of undulate and come up, and then in the background we see sort of waves, and that's my impression of the water. And so we have kind of the sun coming over the water. The other piece of this was the glass. Um, there's four pieces of glass and uh, I don't want to get into too much about Ryan and his family, but there's four members of the family, and I thought four pieces of glass would be a really cool thing. Um, this piece is about five and a half feet to the bottom, so you'd almost have to stand on your tiptoes. It's more to let light in than anything. Um, we may have to move that down a little bit so that you can see out of it. So this is kind of the face identifier. Then my thought is we've got the, the kiddos, so they're growing up, but they can see through these windows. So these are the two windows for the kids, and uh, these are the two windows for Ryan and Meg. I'm not going to say this one's Ryan or this one's Meg. It's it's these are their windows, um, and I think for me that makes a really nice statement. It lets you see through the door. It doesn't let you. It's not like having a big piece of glass all over the door that just kind of lets you see everything. Uh, my guess is they'll approach the door from this side and uh, be able to see things. But anyway, then we have a really large handle over here, a push handle. So I haven't decided whether this is going to be stainless in the middle or if it's going to be mild steel that's powder coated. But the two ends are going to be core 10 steel, so we're going to have kind of a juxtaposition. There's a nice word for you of uh, clean, shiny material where people can grab. And then the core 10 is actually rusted. That's the finish. It's just a rusted finish. It looks like red velvet uh, or kind of a terracotta velvet when it rusts out. And the two ends of this will be terracotta. So terracotta color, you know, there'll be core 10. And this will be the nice polished piece here so people will know that's, that's where you grab, that's where you touch, and uh, we don't touch <laughs> here. Uh, and then I've got my little lock set on here, so there'll be a deadbolt there. On the edge, I think we're going to have uh, roller latches, so there won't be a knob. There is no knob on this door. There's going to be a lock right here, and that's it. Uh, everything else is done by friction, no turning or uh, any of that business to ugly up the door. Okay, guys, so this is um, the information on the product that we're going to use. Um, the website for my supplier, my supplier is out of Arizona, um, and they actually manufacture uh, the Core 10, and I'm calling it Core 10. If you look up Core 10, Core 10 only comes, the thinnest Core 10 comes is in uh, plate thicknesses, so I can't remember if it's uh, 16th inch or 8th inch or quarter inch, but it doesn't come in sheet good. Um, the company, it, their website is steeliq.com, so S-T-E-E-L-I-Q.com. And if you're an artist uh, like me who's looked for Core 10 in the past and you don't want to work with quarter-inch plate, uh, there's not a whole lot of resource, and it actually took me a long time to locate these guys. And they make roofing, but they also sell flat sheets, so 48 by 96 or 4 by 8 sheets. They sell some narrower sheets as well and they sell some different gauges, so I'm buying 22 gauge. Uh, you can get 18, and I think uh, you can get 16. Um, <clears throat> locally here, I could have gotten 16 gauge, but it was uh, a different metal, whatever else. The A606 is very, very important uh, because it's the alloy that will rust and be very uniform. 
if you get some of the other alloys, uh, they won't rust uniformly. Some will be purple, some will be terracotta colored, some will be dark red. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful. And the stuff that Steel IQ sells, I think they have a different name. I'm on their website now. Nah, maybe that is the name of the company. Their product is called Bare Naked Steel. Uh, the stuff they sell is is the right stuff if you're an artist trying to make something really nice and uniform. Um, I talked with Alan Bendewald, who is their COO, I believe. I talked to him today. Very helpful. Very, very helpful. Very knowledgeable. And they ship product all over the country from Arizona. I was concerned about shipping it here to the Midwest and how much that would cost and and really uh, I couldn't get the product a, I couldn't get a similar product locally any less expensive so uh, to get it locally was actually uh, about 25 percent increase in cost and uh, what Alan uh, said we, we had a really long conversation it was really good uh, he's very very knowledgeable about this stuff um, is they try and ship they try and package different orders together so you know mine might be packaged together with somebody in Illinois and Minnesota and they'll just kind of you know deliver it all at the same time so uh, they do really well the other thing is uh, people worry about how do you get this stuff to rust evenly and you can make a rust in a day uh, Alan was telling me you take vinegar and salt water uh, in a mixture and you can get the recipe on his website sorry um, you can get the recipe on his website but the key is to be able to mist it on a panel uh, in a nice even fashion because if you get it uneven then it might rust unevenly and what my thought is what really comes in handy is the ability to uh, spray automotive paint because I can put that vinegar and salt water into a spray gun probably not my good automotive gun I'll probably buy a cheapo gun uh, to do this with but you can put it in there and spray it on the panel and as long as you don't get runs which means, you know, just light material, lots of air, I guess. Uh, just put it on there and it'll rust nice and even. So we're going to do some experiments later on with all of this stuff. Uh, but if you're an artist looking for this stuff, COR-10, CORE-10, uh, the number 10, is what they call their product. So you can look it up, steeliq.com, and they will hook you up. Uh, very knowledgeable, good supplier, and... Uh, Anyway, so the next phase, and I apologize, I'm not the best clay modeler in the world. In fact, I, I've never used plasticine. This is my first effort with plasticine. So there we go. That's the update. Ryan and Meg, I hope you like it. If you don't, I'll be doing some more work.